right? Like, mm. yeah, hundred percent. So right? You just hit the whoa. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I mean, you know, you know, I did. Got it. <laughs> it, was, it was fresh too. It was like, yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Should you try to get on camera next time? Or something? Yeah, dude, that was exactly that, that shit. That shit. That shit. That shit. That shit. That shit. That This is Higher Education's podcast. Today we're joined by... You guys want to introduce yourselves? Yeah, yeah, I'm X. Hi. I'm Brian. I'm Carl. I'm hey. finally not alone in the uh, camera off corner camera, over Off here. camera corner. Yeah, we got Carl joining the podcast. Carl, say what's up to the fellas real quick. What's going on? Hey. To all right, the guys. Fellas. To the fellas. To the fellas. To the fellas. Right, right, my fault, nigga. Damn, to everybody. All right, sorry. Just the fellas. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm just kidding. Actually, all you ladies. Nah, there. the ladies love. <laughs> yeah, is that what you want your audience yeah. to be? Hello? Just, just the fellas? Well, let's think about it like this. I do a lot of dude-centric topics. So, like, it's, it's, I would like for there to be more girls that watch her show. But it's a lot of guy centric topics, and I understand that, so I'm not like upset about it. It's just, yeah. Imagine that one person who watches all of the videos be sitting home right now and have a vagina and be like, this nigga. What the fuck, guys? <laughs> Come on! I was rooting for you! <laughs> you guys not even thinking of me and shit. I uh, came back around. So, I got a lot of topics on the docket today. Got a litany of topics I want to bring up. All right, so the first topic I want to talk about Joe Budden. So Logic is one of the trashiest rappers he's ever heard. Can you still hear me from here? What's up? No. You still hear me from here? Yeah, no, not really. Is that too far? I'm sorry. Yeah, fuck Joe Budden. This is my bad. <laughs> I heard what you said. Fuck Joe Budden. <laughs> Joe Budden described Logic as easily one of the worst rappers to grace a microphone. The nigga's just a hater. And I was like, yeah, you just a professional hater. Like ba- basically, the comments came on a recent episode of the Joe Budden podcast after Pump It Up. Uh, the rapper listened to French Montana's Twisted single featuring ASAP Rocky, Juicy J, and Logic. ASAP Rocky! Joe Budden said, Logic, you are easily one of the worst rappers to ever grace a microphone. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> he said, <laughs> I don't know what they're telling you at Def Jam. I know you sold a lot of records. I know you sell a whole bunch of tours, and I know how successful you are. I have to be honest, you're horrible. <laughs> I was like, Joe, I don't think so. I'm a Logic <laughs> fan. I didn't think... I, I, first of all, Ice JJ Fish. <laughs> yes. You remember Ice JJ Fish? Yes, girl. Ooh, like you don't even know what Ice so JJ Fish is. Something about you, girl. Oh. That just made my head wanna... No, I don't know any Ice JJ Fish singles. I don't remember that. I remember it, but I don't want to remember it. Is what I'm saying. That's <laughs> See, not Ice JJ. I remember uh, Krispy Kreme though. That's different. That's not Ice JJ. It's not as Krispy Kreme. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and the co-hosts, uh, Rory and May, were like, they didn't want to say Logic was trash, but Joe Budden was like, come on, y'all know it. <laughs> y'all gotta protect him. <laughs> it's like, why are you being so petty? <laughs> it's like, why are you coming after him? He's not even here to defend himself. Like, exactly. You just go and talk shit about the nigga, he's not even here. <laughs> what? Just look at you after you uh, go to the house. <laughs> 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 uh, the, the look uh, was like, oh, I want to say something. And I was like... <laughs> no, I was like... I was like yeah, exactly. That's what's up. <laughs> so. All right. No, pause sorry. That. Pause that. Sorry. It's no, not that. Yeah, yeah, pause that. <laughs> right. I had to. <laughs> so, <laughs> the next topic I want to talk about is the NBA and China again. Mm. So, basically... LeBron said some words about GM Daryl Morey's comments. You know, GM Daryl Morey tweeted a picture, and it said, "I stand with I stand for freedom. I stand with Hong Kong." That has started a basically NBA between China war, uh, U.S. semi trade war. Nike's pulling all of Houston Rockets materials from shelves. They're not showing Houston Rockets games. So when Los Angeles Lakers star LeBron James talked to press on Monday. He warned the dangers of the freedom of speech, right? 
So LeBron says, yes, we all do have freedom of speech, but at times there are ramifications for the negatives that can happen when you're not thinking about others and you're only thinking about yourself. I don't want to get into words or a sentence feed with Daryl or Daryl Morey, but I believe he wasn't educated on the situation at hand and he spoke. And so many people could have been harmed not only financially, but physically, emotionally, and spiritually. So, um, so LeBron said all that, and I get his point. I understand what he's saying. What he's basically saying is that sometimes when you say things, whether or not the consequences are intended or not, there will be consequences. Right, right. And it's all it it's always gonna be bigger than what you intend. I mean, that's just that's just how it is, especially when you're in the spotlight like that. I mean, someone as big as um you know, who who is this guy? Um for the Rockets? The GM. Uh, okay, so yeah, like I thought. He's the GM for the Rockets and and LeBron James is, you know, LeBron the, James. the best fucking fucking basketball player in the world, arguably. But yeah, you know, it was LeBron James. So anything both of these people are gonna say are gonna be under like any sort of scrutiny you know so um (laughs) it just goes to show like he's not i don't know i i think he's not necessarily wrong in the situation but like there's parts of it there's parts of it that he could have been you know here's my biggest you know my biggest problem with it is that it seems like lebron james and his comments are almost victim shaming daryl morey well if he hadn't done this we wouldn't be in this predicament (laughs) if he hadn't said this well, and to be fair, LeBron did say you could have waited a week till we weren't in China. If you waited, if he would have just waited a week and and tweeted that picture, it'd be fine. But NBA was literally doing a tour of China, so they were in China when this happens. Yeah. But also, LeBron James has a media company that's producing Space Jam too. What's the second biggest? What's the biggest market for movies? China. China. Yeah. <laughs> and people are attacking LeBron James because they're like, ah, oh, see, all he cares about is making himself look better, so he'll tackle social issues when it makes him look better. Mm-hmm. And my point for that is, it is understandable for an athlete, especially a black athlete, to be like, all right, I have these causes in America that I relate to, so it's easier for me to speak on and stand up. And it's like, so there's a European player, I can't think of his name, but he is at war with an eastern european president slash dictator right okay and he's not allowed back over there i think it's enos Cantor. now it's fair for enos Cantor to be involved in those eastern european conflicts because that's where he's from that's where his heart's close to he know he understands that so it makes sense for lebron to be like america and these problems over here i can gladly speak up for that right right. but over here is this now it's a lot different where it gets messy is that lebron dropped a documentary basically where he talks about (coughs) how he wants to stand up for kids that came from his situation which is fine if it would have stopped there (coughs) all over the globe he says Hmm. that's where it gets difficult because you you Uh, said those words yourself and then you were uh, then you told the guy to be quiet and he said (laughs) you shouldn't speak on topics that you're not educated about Mm -hmm. lebron just you yourself are not educated about yeah, how you do the same you, thing how are you uneducated telling somebody else they're uneducated <laughs> i mean i feel like oh, i feel like man. he's trying to be <clears throat> michael jordan he's trying to be this global superstar that all these other people can like attach themselves to and that's why whether he's <laughs> doing it for a good reason or a bad reason you know whether it's to build a brand or to have a new generation of kids in different countries, um, you know, uh, look at professional sports in a different way, you know. Um, but the biggest thing that I take away from this is as much as he starts to try appealing to everybody, the core people who care and believe in him are going to stop caring about him the way that they do. Like, as much... <coughs> as he thinks he can be impactful on, and I hate to put race into this, but like little Chinese kids or like, you know, like that. I don't think that's, it's the inner city black kids who really relate to him. That's the point. Yeah. And it's like (laughs) as much as like, he wants to be like, Oh, I'm just like, you you know, little kid in a Chinese village. He's not, but a kid who grew up in a similar situation to him financially or like educationally or like, you know, environment, you know, like a kid like that can actually physically relate to him versus like i said 
a kid who grew up in a village, you know, who but like then, didn't get internet to like five years ago. Why would like, he say all over the globe though? Why wouldn't he just? That's why would you put yourself in such a box to be scrutinized later for? Mm-hmm. If you say that, that means you now have to stand up for all issues. Yeah, you have to be like, okay, there's a famine going on in fucking wherever. Like, we got to go, you know, deal with it and be like, at that same time, you know what you have to do? You got to show up for that fucking uh, uh, international fucking basketball game. That's yeah. what you got to do. Yeah. But you, you you couldn't say, I'm just doing this for America. Like, you couldn't say Then that. you would be scrutinized yeah. all over yeah. the globe. Yeah. But it's, so, that's it's fair. just to say so something like, it, it's, it, but it's Why even... But why, my problem is the comments... My problem is that I have no problems with the comments he said there. It's these comments compounded with his comments criticizing the GM, Daryl Morey, for speaking against China, for tweeting a picture. And so when you look at that and you look at hindsight, it's kind of like NBA players should either say what they're going to say or don't say anything. Don't do this thing where you're like shilling for china and it's kind of like i don't know i i feel like joe harris said something where like steve kerr came out and he basically was like look i'm not gonna make comments because i have players that have chinese sponsorships and even though i might feel that saying something right now is the right thing taking money away from my players and people who didn't say anything but because i said something that's not right and Mm -hmm. that's just what steve kerr said and again i was like you didn't have to say that no exactly joe harris that's saying too much even so Joe Harris, a random NBA player, said, Joe Harris on whether or not he's worried about the financial implications of Daryl Morey's tweet. I already get paid too much to play a game, so not really. Literally, literally, and I get it because he's not like a big face, he's not a big name, but if he's not worried about his money flow, why is someone with 10 times as much more money than him, like LeBron, Steve Kerr, like, all right, I don't want to say Steve Kerr because Steve Kerr is sticking up for other people. But why is LeBron, who definitely has 10 times as much money as Joe Harris? It's it's because they have people above them breathing down their necks. Because the people at the top who are making the most amount of money who are going to hurt the most from this, you know? So it's a money thing. Because, because, well, here's what I'm saying. Is, is like, well, yeah, definitely. Like, it's not a Houston Rockets player who's going to anticipate... Or expect any sort of. I showed you the video, the lady asking James Harden. I showed you the video, the lady asking James Harden and Russell Westbrook the question, and it it was over while they were in China. And she is like, she basically asked a question that wasn't, "How do you feel about Hong Kong protesters?" or "How do you feel about Daryl Morey's comments about the protesters?" She asked, with the way the basically she said the way the MVA is not allowing discussion on this, how do you feel that it will impact further social issues related, like? Like, how do you feel the NBA handling this is going to affect you guys going forward doing any other social issues? And, like, NBA, like, the people there are like, no, like, you can't answer that question. You're it's not like, allowed to ask that. You just it's not said, basketball related. And then You just said in your, like, question, like, with all of this going on, you know, and with, with you, like, not being allowed to speak on it. So why... Why then, like, even further the question? It's know? not that, though. It's not asking, was what he did good or bad? Are the protesters good or bad? Is China good or bad? But how is this going to affect moving forward? Like, how is the NBA like, literally, effect, uh, essentially like, being a hypocrite? When I heard that question, the answer that I formulated that I thought that they were going to say, or, like, that the right answer to that question that they can give at that time, if they want to say anything about it at all, is, uh, yeah, uh, we're... You know, people are definitely going to have to think twice about, you know, what they say before they say it, because, you know, uh, you know, it really can affect things. That's literally a no cut. Like even people I, could tear that. Even people would tear that apart, though. How? I've, because why would it, it's just the whole notion of why was what he said bad? He didn't say it was bad. He didn't say it was bad. People have to think about what they send out. It had an impl- it had an effect that was negative. He's not saying that what he said was bad. Okay, so he yes, should. losing money is negative. But if your money is tied up in something like China, then you're already complicit anyway, so like isn't doing anything like that money is already blood money, essentially. I mean, yeah, how how do you figure? Because the fact that China has this money and they have this audience that we they have this demographic that we want to reach, then they can effectively cut us off. 
so we make deals with them or the NBA makes deals yeah. with them so they can have that access mm-hmm. knowing all these other things and knowing that at any moment that they can just be puppeted by them being like hey don't do that don't let this player say this true uh, it's a whole line I don't know we could talk about this forever I just want to move into our next topic which is Jane the Virgin star Gina Rodriguez said nigga on Instagram while singing a song and you know what? I actually have no problem with like people of color saying nigga, but I understand that you can't tell someone else not to be offended. So there's that. Also, I feel weird to like some Mexican walked up. I was like, "What's up, my nigga?" I'd be like, "Hey, bro, what's what's, what's going on?" Takashi can't, <laughs> can't say no. That. You say, you say, "Hola, I say." Hola, pendejo. This is Gina. No, don't say anything offensive. This is this is Gina saying the N word, and then this is her apology afterwards. Do. I could do what you do. Believe me. Niggas give me heebie jeebies. <laughs> Niggas give me heebie jeebies. Niggas give me heebie jeebies. I just wanted to reach out and apologize. I am sorry. I am sorry if I offended anyone by singing along to the Fugees to a song I love that I grew up on. I love Lauren Hill. And um, I really am sorry if I offended you. So. Yeah, I love that. She, I really am sorry. She's not well, sorry. She that was her sorry. first apology. She's I don't know. Listen, I don't know. Sorry. Oh, wait, 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 wait. That was her first apology. I, wait, I is she wouldn't be sorry. What, that's, that's, that's it's necessary. just a Fuji. She, like, she's she's just I'm assuming she's Hispanic because her last name is Rodriguez. So, like... That's me being assumptuous. Is it? Is it just me or is it, like, a little less... It is a little less, listen. but let me tell you my annoyance. It feels like everybody is not black and it's not white. Feels yeah. like they can say it around black people because they're not white, and it's like, I mean, bro, like get to know me, like you, like I know you ball, you Asian, but you can't call me nigga. Like that's no, all right. We you can shoot well, we squaring up though, but don't call me nigga. Yeah, we, we squaring up if you do. Go get in the corner and shoot those threes, <laughs> sir. <laughs> sir, <laughs> six seven ass motherfucker, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Fucking thyroid issue, Asian ass motherfucker. So she came back and she made an apology part two. And she said that uh, <laughs> the word I sang carries a legacy of hurt and pain that I cannot even imagine. Whatever consequences I face for my actions today, none will be more hopeful than the personal remorse I feel. I feel so deeply protective and responsible to the community of color, but I have let this community down. I have some serious learning and growing up to do, and I'm deeply sorry for the pain I've caused. I mean, she just, she was singing. It's so hard out here for non-black people to be singing songs. <laughs> Yeah, I and having costumes. And in that situation, hey, shut up. How am I supposed to be a Native American if I can't wear the- No, nigga. <laughs> no, no, no. We don't do that here. I just hate seeing celebrities. Double no, down. no. Um, I, hate, I think I hate seeing celebrities double down so fucking hard. That first apology was her doubling down for sure. Uh, I don't, a little bit. I mean, the way she said it, I'm sorry if I offended you. I really am sorry. <laughs> You know you're not. <laughs> you know you're not. <laughs> no. And, like, I think in, in terms of, you know, the word nigga, it it, it comes up to, like, personal, uh, like, offense. You know, offense is, is normally taken. You yeah. Know, not really given. So, like, you know, if you're offended by that, you know, that's up to you. That's your prerogative. Uh, me, personally, like, no, I'm, I'm not offended, you know. And she apologized. When she apologized, I'm like, oh, whatever. Like, it's fine. <laughs> like, but, you know, that's not me saying that I don't understand, you know, other people being offended by it, you know? Yeah. It's just you saying you not offended yourself. It's whatever. Like, it's the Fuji's. I get it. That's what I'm saying. I'm not offended. I just understand why people. I rule the world. And she said, I like that song. I'm sorry. Song. It's like, yeah, Shh. white people love Lil Wayne, so. <laughs> white people love Kanye West. <laughs> Nigga, there's <laughs> more than an RBO. What are you gonna do? I'm really not a big Kanye saying. fan. Yeah, I, I put Kanye in timeout, and then after I put him in timeout, I stopped listening to him. Yeah, like after he like, yeah, kind of like. What's up? Yeah, Kanye's Kanye's a god fearing man. Okay, now. so wait, Kanye yeah. released music, right? Yeah. He had a show previewing for his party. It was free. Now we can talk about whether or not our people didn't go in droves to get these tickets even though they were free all i know is it was full of rich white people and it was free people 
and it was free. Uh, uh, Where are these uh, people without money getting the free tickets? Yeah, it was a real quick. Um, I don't know if you know this or not, but so like my I my the my, the guy I work for makes good money, and he loves bargain shopping and free stuff. Like he is, <laughs> that's why they like, showed up. They said we don't spend money because like rich people love free stuff. Yeah, okay. they do because they're tired of spending money. Like they always have but, to spend money. But wouldn't money. you think people without money love free stuff more though? Because they ain't got money. Yeah, but hopefully you know where they're at. Work, Work it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I, I don't want to. That's lazy. Bro. I don't want to be rude. I don't want to be rude. Like, like I work. Like, so I and I struggle. Awful. Like I work and I struggle. So like, you know, I know it's hard. Don't yeah. we all? Yeah. You know, I, I'm not saying it's not hard, but. I know it's hard, but you know, especially I when it's you're like, at work. I'm at work. Oh, you dropped the tickets at noon. Then I had a nine or whatever. <laughs> I'm not about to leave on my lunch break I to can't. go get tickets and yeah, come back hungry. Like, no. <laughs> exactly. And come I'm back sorry. Hungry. <laughs> so yeah, I get that. Um, but anyway, I want to talk about an ex college, ex NFL player named Cordell Jones. Played for OSU. He's really good. The year before he went into the NFL. Wait, 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 wait. What? Which OSU? Ohio State. Okay. So the year before he went to Ohio State, or, I'm sorry, the year before he went to the draft, he started two games at the end of Ohio State's postseason and was really nice. And at that point, he was projected to be about... Is he a cornerback? <coughs> was that? Quarterback. Quarterback. Yeah. So at one point, he's projected to be a first-round pick. After those three games. He decides, <laughs> nah, I'm going back to school. He's a later-round pick, and he's at the NFL. Another player at the NFL, they may be, Antonio Bryant. <laughs> <laughs> Why you got a dick like that? Antonio, Fuck you! <laughs> Antonio Bryant is a wide receiver, and he took a shot at Ohio State quarterback. He basically went on Twitter, and he and uh, I didn't say this, but Cordell Jones recently just signed as a quarterback for the XFL. He's going to be on yeah. DC's team. Wow. So, at least he's playing football. Nice, nice. What? All right. Okay. What? Go on, go on. What? I'm just uh, as a person at what as a person not in the league, you gotta do something. XFL, yeah, though, come yeah. on, like uh, as opposed to what? What else are you gonna do? <laughs> what else are you gonna do? <laughs> <Did> you <see? laughs> Anybody try? <laughs> like I, I heard, I heard you go from Lake being you go from being a college quarterback to working a full time job. You don't go from NFL to a full time job unless you like blow all your money. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You get a part-time job? <laughs> yeah, Something, you, baby. So yeah, basically Cordell Jones is out the league now. He's in the XFL, which is great for him to be playing football because there really is no other alternatives for professional football. Antonio Bryant basically tweeted, Cordell Jones is now in the XFL. So he's trying to rain on this nigga parade already. Well, I mean, if he doesn't make it in the NFL, he can just stop being a pussy and you go play rugby in like every other country. Yeah, make a ton of money. Is rugby really that like? Yes, they do. It's 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 football mixed with like half fighting, but they don't have helmets. So like I I mean I know so what like, rugby is well, like. Why would you? But like hold on. So like what? here's my thing. Huh. So hold on. You're what? going from hold on. Oh, oh, oh. I guess if you purely want this little enjoyment of the game, yeah. But what about everything else that surrounds that? So like here's here's the thing. Like you also gotta think. Why go from something that you're like occasionally getting hurt in to something you're just getting mangled in like so like quarterback position in in that either yeah that's everybody that's what i'm saying that's everybody it's not like there there aren't like set rules that you can't do this against someone there are i mean there are less but there are less because there's no face mask so you're going for like you can't hit above the head can you no no there i mean i I played rugby for a long time, yeah. and there's a lot of rules. I said, well, I said um, but is it less than crowd. football? <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, are you a little bit? Devil's like you can, you could get away with, you could get away with some stuff with people certain people referees, yeah. uh, but that's in every sport. Um, I'm not gonna say that, like the injuries aren't like a lot worse, but like in rugby, you're trained to tackle a certain way so that you don't 
like get hurt. There's there's far less concussions, mm-hmm. uh, far less head injuries in that sport versus, uh, like, alone football, versus like, football. Oh, and these fuckers are in so much in. so much padding. Well, it's the whole thing with boxing. Um, it's the fact that like you have something heavier on you, and it's like, oh, this is padded. I could hit harder. Yeah, and also and it's like it's going it's going to hit harder too. And <laughs> also like in in terms of like injuries too, like people people. I hate when people say it. Uh, people always say that like rugby has a ton of like like fucked up injuries, and and yes, I will agree that some of their uh, injuries can be like very very gruesome. It's a tough ass sport, but a lot of the injuries you're getting like in those games are just fucking like scrapes and fucking bruises, fam. Like, and that shit never fucking killed anybody, you know. Like it's a little turf burn, you know, a little blood, maybe a nosebleed here and there. Um, you know, maybe, maybe you got cleated a little bit in a tackle, but other than that, fam, generally you're okay. But yeah, your body's taking a beating and you're, you're playing a, a hard ass sport just like in football though. But you're not getting like, you're not getting like, like dead like that. You know? That's I fair. Guess, I just I don't think honestly, it's a reasonable like, switch. <laughs> portrayals I've seen have always been more on the gruesome side, like on the, like, like people talking about like going for i mean like i said like shit happens shit happens in the sport here's here's the thing too a lot of the major injuries that happen in uh football um happen because of mass it happens to do just a body emotion stays in motion so when a big ass dude lands on you and not to say that dudes in rugby aren't big but they don't have big fat linemen because their guys have to be moving around the yeah. field constantly. So they're they big dudes. They they like, have bigger dudes, but they're, but they're not, not like as, lineman size. Yeah. You know, no, they mm-hmm. don't have like six four, three hundred pound guys. Yeah, yeah, multiple nah. of them running around. No, too. no, because they, they they need to move around the field too quickly. Like those linemen, like they get like one or two plays in, and they're like, ah, oh, oh, like switch me out, sub me out, you know. But like they need yeah, to be going, man. like. No, and you got to be going for 80 minutes straight, you know? So, like, like when you reduce the mass anyway, you reduce how much, like, pressure... You what, know, and you play taking. both sides of the ball? <laughs> yeah, there okay. is no... So, rugby is not <laughs> a viable <laughs> switch for Cordell. For any, for, unless you're, like, a running back or a wide receiver, I don't think it's a viable switch. What? I mean, can you play a position? Yes, but there's no there's no QB position. And there's something of that, but... I was going to say, everyone you, just hits, throws, or runs the ball. There is one person that does the uh, like play calling and stuff, but what do they do while everyone's tossing the ball. Um, they're well, they're they're the scrum half. They just get back into the play. They call the play and whatever it is, you know, they go after it. But then it just goes from there. So on offense, they just hang back. No, you get into the play. So you get the ball. Yeah, everyone gets the ball though. But like I said, there is one person who in the beginning they call the play. And it starts from there. Um, that's the scrum half. Uh, so, like, after a scrum, after a line out, you know, the ball comes immediately to the scrum half. The scrum half is the one who puts the ball into the scrum. And usually they're the first person to get the uh, the ball after a line out. Uh, because, like I said, they have to call the play. Uh, once they once the play's called, you know, they throw the ball out, whatever they got to do. And, you know, it starts from there. Um, but the fact that it's so continuous means that, you know, that's not, there's not always a scrum down, uh, and it's not technically always going to be the, uh, scrum half, like calling the plays in, you know, in different situations. Cause they obviously can't be there like all the fucking time, yeah. but the majority of the time it's the scrum half. Though. Okay. It still doesn't seem like I would want to leave america to go do that not if i was already if 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 i had no other option yeah i mean i'm sorry but xfl yeah finna be a spree yeah what i can say i mean hey you do what you do man do do what you gotta do yeah niggas go to canada to play football at least now i don't have to leave the country i could stay here and still play football we were talking about arena football the other day and you're like because arena football is Arena football is like football with a shorter field with walls up on the side that you can run off of yeah. and tricks. Yeah, that's not yeah, football. That's... Wait, what? It's like street football. Wait, yeah. hold on. It's like, hold on. It's like street two football. It's hardcore football. It's like NFL street. It's like NFL street. Like it's like wall running football. Yeah. Do you, do but you like, remember NFL street? Yeah. yeah. Where you have to okay. get on the walls and shit. 
So you get the game breakers. Wait, and you're like, yeah, doing flips. Yeah. Okay. Nuts. So all the way back to Cordell <gasps> Jones. <laughs> Cordell Blue. All the way back to Cordell Jones. Uh, I got so you yeah, Corbin Blue. He's in the XFL. He's playing football like he wants to. So Antonio Bryant basically tweeted. He goes, Cordell Jones is now in the XFL. He would have been a top 10 pick in the 2015 NFL draft. But instead, he went back to Ohio State, then fell to the fourth round. D1 athletes, don't let them coaches lie to you about the importance of a degree. If you get a first round grade, leave. So Cordell Jones saw this tweet, and he responded, I went back to OSU to finish school, something I worked as hard as my football career. I'm my own man and think for myself. Going back benefited me and my family long term. Educate yourself on the situation before commenting and spreading the wrong message. And I was like, I mean, nigga, fair. Yeah, that's his life. I mean, but also, here's the thing there is very little upside to leaving college once you've already been projected as a first round. I mean,. Yes, in terms of football, you're... In terms of what else? In terms of football, you're 100% correct. In terms of what else, am I wrong? Nigga, he he just said that he got a college degree and it benefited his family in in other ways that we don't know. Wait, 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 ready? Because you can get your college degree whenever. It's not going to leave. But the ability to be drafted and get first-round pick money is not going to be there forever. You can go to... You can get drafted and then do what many, many NFL players do and go to school and... (laughs) No, <laughs> tanking in the NFL does not work because you're no, not. Gonna... I'm just saying, like, here's what I'm saying. No, here's... no, no. But my point is that we. I, I lost my point. Like, <coughs> I, I, you can do what many in the NFL. You can do what many in the NFL do: get drafted and then get your degree in the off season. That's what I was saying. You can still work I mean, on your degree. If you go back to school, there's, there's no. There way. is very little to no reason. To do. You can go to school anyway. What's the point of going to school? Financial security, either financial security, learning, getting into your job. Yeah. What's his job? His, his job is to play a football player. You know, yeah. Like very li- like there is some reasons to go back, but there are very little reasons to go back once you've been projected as a first round pick. Well, I mean, well, fair, well, fair, well, but like I, I said, maybe from my wife's studio and, and so did my dad. So I gotta graduate. Too. Like for example, Jake Locker, his whole family went to USC. He went there all four years. He didn't play for money, so he's not like oh, I'm gonna go to NFL get more money. Play for the love of the game. I get that. But your first round pick, you lost thirty million dollars. That's unfortunate. Yeah. But here's what I'm saying. That's what it is. But if you don't need that money, I'm just like, whatever, thirty million, I don't need thirty million. I do. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'll fucking use thirty million. 30 million. Hi, I, I will 30 million. send you my bank account information. <laughs> yeah. You can just send my you just, routing number. Yeah, my routing number is zero, this. Just so just I just know. Venmo me at Ayo. double S. Yeah. So I I my phone D-A-B-O-L-X. number. B O L X. It's gonna say you want the NFL mm-hmm. and Roger Goodell Venmo you. Yes, yes. I do. One hundred percent. Me feet picks. <laughs> it was in the memo line. No, no. I, I just want I, money. I don't need fee picks, dude. Just like, <laughs> please <laughs> help me. Like, help. Come on, we struggle out here, here, dude. dude. It, it's just like it's a can, hard life. It's the fact that you we can need always go back to college. I'll send. Right? We need help. Right? You need. All right, all right, all right. Draw, draw it back in. I'll send fee picks. <laughs> so, it, it's basically the point that like I. Fee picks. No. And you said there's no upside to going back. No, I know, but I was trying to find my point where I was saying it's basically the blah, blah, blah. I don't know. Y'all made me lose my train of thought. So, speaking of the XFL, I want to talk about Sean Oakman. I don't know if you guys remember Sean Oakman, but he was like the, he was the meme nigga where it was like, oh, third and ten. No, it's first down. You right. It's the dude from Baylor in the green jersey. With the, the jersey was a midriff. And the rest of it is just fucking, just massive man. Do you know the meme I'm talking about? Yeah. What you said, when you said midriff, I'm like, yes. It's the big ass nigga standing yes. over the other two. Yeah. Yes. So if you guys That's don't know, PSD. Sean Aikman in 2015 was projected as a first round pick. I gotta see pictures. Or not, yeah, he's projected as a see picture of this thing. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yes. All right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Here's the thing yeah. too. He's not. I don't know what really, the fuck I typed in. Really that big. His but that's not what I got. Just like curled up. <laughs> no, that's a fucking giant. I, mean, he's I don't know what I typed in, big, but that's not what I got. He is massively <laughs> built. Huge. He's massively built. Like. It's just a very fortunate angle and very fortunate. Shut open. 
He's six nine, so that's not an unfortunate angle. Oh, oh. And, and he's two hundred eighty he's pounds. Bump. He's just big. So he's big and he's fit. All right. So basically, in twenty fifteen, Sean Oakman was a first round pick. He decides to go back to college because he wants to be the number one overall pick. Mm. But injuries and shit happen. He yeah. dips all the way down yeah. to a projected like. I mean, twenty sixteen. He's still projected to be a first-round pick before the injuries, but he shoots all the way down to around second, third. In 2016, he's accused of rape. So basically, basically what happened... Um, At the school? What's up? At the school. So he was in Waco, Texas. He's about to fly to Florida. This is two weeks before the draft. So not really at the school, but he goes out to... A, or a girl hits him up that he had relationships with when he was at Baylor. She's like, I'm going out to a bar. Am I gonna, Are you in town? He's like, yeah. It's like, am I see you at the bar? He's like, yeah. He goes to the bar. They're all over each other. Every, witnesses say they're all over each other. She sends a text to her friends, which she later deletes, that says, don't wait up for me. So they go back to his crib. Why oh, she delete They go. So they go back to his crib, and she pushes them against the wall, gives them oral sex. They go in his room, 45 minutes of actual sex. He says that she was there all night, but then leaves in the morning, and he found an earring by her sofa, but didn't think anything of it. Uh, he then goes over another girl's house because he had plans that night. And he said, I never wanted to even see this girl again. While he's at old girl's house, right? He gets a text from his friend. Like, there are cops outside of your house. Gets there. Cops like, you know this girl? He's like, yeah. He's like, do you have sex with this girl? He's like, yeah. He's like, well, she's accusing you of sexual assault. From then, like, he gets dropped by basically everyone that was his that was around him, his friend. Like, he was hanging out with Brandon Marshall when he was on the uh, Chicago Bears. Yeah. Brandon Marshall just stopped talking to him when this yeah, happened. Yeah, immediately. So he graduated from Baylor in December with a degree in kinesiology, but he was forced to take on various jobs. Like first he worked at packing diapers at eleven dollars an hour, uh, going to work each day. His face is plastered oh, with news. What? Yeah. What? What are you packing the diapers? For? Into a box. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, he does that, but then he's at work with his coworkers and like basically his coworkers. He's just on the news and they're just using the words rape and all and people. It's his, his face. His coworkers were like, no. His coworkers were like, we see you. So he keeps getting fired from places. He said he worked uh, doing like fertilizer with this company and he works so good that he would do one to, his boss went to like meet with, or went to take him to meet with some higher ups. Higher ups researched him and let him go. Yeah. Damn. Immediately. Yeah. So then he works, uh, he just kept working outside is the only thing he could do. Uh, he worked for a concrete dude, company, worked for a dude, carnival, six, nine. worked for an dude. event planning service, but then he couldn't work at the event planning service because they were going to do an event with Baylor. Yeah. And he's not allowed to be at Baylor because oh of the case. Oh, gosh. Holy shit. He had a brief stay with Can the I Indoor Football question? League. What's up? Was she white? Yeah. <laughs> what she thought this was. Saving the question, like, <laughs> nigga, what? So, yeah, basically, he couldn't keep a job. His second lawyer drops him as a client because he doesn't have 30000 to pay her. Uh, 2018, he has a brief stay with the Indoor Football League, and that's the last job he had. His trial was delayed five times, and in February, his accuser testified that he raped her twice at his duplex. The fuck? The woman also claimed there was no oral sex, but they found semen in her mouth. So, that was a lie. So, just throw out the case. On February 28th, he was found not guilty of all charges by a jury. Of course. After two hours, which is not long for a jury. No. He's cleared of all those charges, and now he is also drafted by an XFL team. It took five, five delays. Yeah. Five different delays. Yep. Well, and also the thing, too, was that Baylor at the time Can had... she a, get the chair? She should get something. But also at the time, Baylor was very much involved in a lot of sexual assault rape cases where those dudes actually did it, and Baylor either wasn't doing anything about it, wasn't believing the victim, or trying to cover it up. One of those three things Baylor was doing, so when the Sean Oakman thing happened, they were just like, we need ultimate transparency. Why Fuck not? Fuck his life up for nothing. So, why I mean, not? Is lie detector up, not a thing five years ago? Lie detectors aren't actually credible in court, mm, because inclusive. you can beat a lie detector if you can remain calm. Really? Yeah. yeah. All the lie detector test uh, tells is like your um, uh, your like your it's like a serial killer can beat the shit out of a lie detector. So basically, like when they ask you a question that makes you nervous, like even though you can lie to them, they can tell that like your like heart rate goes up, your like your fucking impulses go up, you know, you start sweating, shit like that. But if you can just remain calm and just actually, they actually have to put a probe in your butt because if you just clench <coughs> your butt, 
that's like a super easy way to like remain calm. So we gotta make sure this thing is not clinching. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, it's a way to beat the polygraph test if they never put something. In, if you don't, if they don't put something in your butt, just let you know. Just clench. Just clench your butthole like <laughs> you holding in a mad diarrhea. Oh, take like you it. just had Arby's and Doc Taco. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. I think I won't clench around a pro. <laughs> No, they'll be like, stop clenching. What you mean? Because like, sensor on the pro is going off mean? the charts. I'm doing my kegels. <laughs> stop it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just have a naturally <laughs> tight butthole. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> FBI agents are going to be like, oh, yeah, bet. No, they're going to be like, nigga, stop it. Sir, I have a naturally tight Kiss. butthole. I can't do anything. They're going to look at you and be like, you know what? That's perfect for prison. Go ahead. <laughs> doing it by itself. Practice some kegels in there. <laughs> it's doing it by itself. Shit, you going to be fine in jail. <laughs> He's doing it by himself. Listen, if he can't, can't come in, he's doing it by himself. do it. He's like, let me in. No, it's not me. He's just doing it. I can't. I'll make the rules. So, yeah, basically, Sean Open went back to college, and it went awful for him. So, he should have just gone to the draft. XFL. That's different, though. That's different. He's like, hey, guys, I'm back in college. You 30? <laughs> yeah, you should have gone back to college. It would all been fine. Are you the same no, height? shouldn't have gone back to college, man. Or that's what I meant. He no, he shouldn't have gone, gone, gone back to college. That's, all right. that's some bullshit, though. That's, yo, fuck that white bitch. Yeah. Yo, she, she should get the chair. Should, I'm telling she you, people, people who, who, who... That's some bullshit. Money, she just and fucked that's the thing up too, his life. Fucked, he's, he's in the XFL, like we said. He's 26, he so he's no not money. super old. It's not money, but it's a she chance to be thirty million dollars. It's a chance to get into the NFL. True. If the XFL works as a spring league for the NFL, that saying. can be a great chance to get back in. Word, word. And if he's still yeah. a dominant player like he was, then yeah. Yeah, I mean oh, he was all right, dominant in college. He's a big nigga. Know. I know, but we never know how that's gonna really get on the field. Yeah. Also, he has three percent body weight, which I think the only NFL body player fat. body fat. Yeah, so only, he has three percent at like two eighty. And I think the only player that has Damn. lost in him is DJ Metcalf, who has 1.6% body fat at, like, almost the same weight. And it's like, y'all niggas not. Yeah, is not. that healthy? Yeah, I'm not human. Is that healthy to <laughs> no. carry that little body fat? Yeah, I know. I read, something about, I read something about Chris Evans during Captain America training. He was like, yeah, we got down to 5% body fat, and that was torture. Bruce Lee was 4 point or 3.3, something like that, body fat. And it is unhealthy it's to be less than 4% body fat. It like, really does seem that Physically way. unhealthy. Yeah, I watch these old ass videos from like, the, like, like. You said this nigga was 1.6? With nah, Bruce Lee. Was, where he was like, he like first came to America and he was like, people were like showing him on TV because yeah. nobody on nobody in, in America had seen like martial arts tiny. before. And not even that, like. They were just parading him around yeah. and showing him off, like doing just like simple like maneuvers. Mm -hmm. And dudes would stand there and like he like it's so hard to tell because like the footage is super like old timey. But he would move and be back at where he started before like the white dude in front of him could even like react to what was happening. And he'd be like mm -hmm. he'd be like, Oh, so you can just kick here and he just like and then he like he just like it like happens and then he's just like just like like staring at him. But I don't know. I just I felt like it was kind of like they were parading him around a little bit. But at the same time, it was kind of cool because nobody in America had ever seen it before yeah. until then. You know what I mean? This dude just came over and was like, "Yeah, but have you ever seen those those early videos? How small he is? Mm -hmm. Like that's partially why everyone was like, like whoa, because over where you know okay. over there it's like it's life." Alright, you know what? That nigga look unhealthy. That dude is huge. Okay, is so him? the article was estimating that he's actually around 3% body fat. Because they're saying this 1.6 number can't be real. I was going to say, 1.6 can't... That's not... That is but they're still nuts. estimating him around 3%. That's, that is nuts, dude. So, like, here's my thing. What the is he performing fuck? at that? I think he gained weight, actually, which means he probably gained some fat, too. Okay, so you can't perform at that. That's more like you're taking a picture. Yeah, you definitely look like Or two down weeks from now, you're gonna take a picture. So you need to be that, and you need to be that for a little bit. So like, cause if you get hit at that, like, can you imagine the damage? It's gonna hurt, nigga. Yeah, like, like, right, well, no. Look at his arm. Like, it looks like he has slimmed down a little bit. That's what I'm saying. So like, he either lost. You know what I mean? Like he either so geez, many. You rings. can still see his shoulders. Yeah, like, you can oh see my his shoulders. God. His shoulders Dude. are still there, and he has no gut like whatsoever. Like it's no. still washboard. 
she did. <laughs> so like that's what I'm saying. It's but not he fair. definitely he definitely like put on a, a bit yeah, of weight before yeah, yeah, a game dude. or something like that or before practice. Damn, dude, that's crazy. Right, yeah, it's probably off season or you something like that. You can't perform at that. Like that's not I couldn't imagine getting hit like that. Oh right. Now it is time for our horrors of the world segment. And so now usually we do some type of horrors of the world, Carl, for if you aren't aware, it's something horrible that happened in the world. Usually something uh, creepy, but this time, we're talking about sports, we're going to hop on the sports horror. It's something that, while not absolutely horrible, would make me fall apart. We already talked about some sports horrors. Uh, listen, we talking about a boy named Kevin. He thought he was sent to heaven. He was a football player, was a lineman. Listen, he sat down, said amen. Thought he was really nice, thought he was really tight. He was a shit, he was kind of fat, but listen, you better sit back, pay attention to the man, listen, he had a simple plan, he was gonna go to D1 college, but listen, this ain't a shit, I can't rhyme something with college, but he ain't get no offers, so he had to go like a golfer, he made some shit up, listen, this was a big fuck up, because, man, he was so embarrassed when everyone found out. He just wanted to scream and shout. Now let me tell you this story. It, it isn't really gory. Horrors of the world. Let that shit unfurl. <laughs> All right, horrors of the world. We gotta talk about a fake signing day. Do you guys know what a signing day is? I love how you. I love how you roast that shit too after you lit it. What? <laughs> <laughs> Pass that shit to X now. Touch the oh, <laughs> you're supposed to catch it. <laughs> Talking about football, I threw it. <laughs> I was to say, how you lose it? <laughs> pick it up, pick it up. Pick so it up, horrors of the up. world, guys. Today we're talking about the football player in high school who faked his own signing day. So for those of you who don't know what a signing day is, it's when you get all the hats in a line for all the schools that offer you a scholarship, and you pick, one. and you go, I'm going here. Then you sign the contract for that school. Yep. So let me cue up a video right here, or a letter of intent for that school. And uh, I decided that uh, I'm gonna be playing football at the University of California. So that is Kevin Hart. All right. Yeah, you guys know the comedian? That's, that's him. All right, so basically this guy, Kevin Hart, he went to school in California in Oakland, right? So growing up, he always wanted to play football. Like, he broke down defenses. He watched college football, Pac-10 football all the time. So at a very young age, he had all these, like, complicated, like, uh, defenses. He knew formations, blitz packages, all this at a very young age. But he's also overweight, so he can't play Pop Warner football. So he plays flag football. Eventually, he gets to college. That is. Or, I'm sorry. Filtered. I'm sorry. Not college. It's the school. Gets to middle school. So high school. what? Gets to middle school, high school. So before this, even uh, he's playing flag football young, right? He basically had. He basically lost his aunt right before high school. Also, right before high school, he moved to Reno. Because they, his family needed to live in a cheaper area, so they moved to a cheaper area, but he had no one. And that couple with the loss of his aunt basically sent him inside. Yeah. Also, when he started high school, he's, he's a big kid. He's 300 pounds. So he's getting ridiculed. Really cool. So his self-esteem is down the gutter. Right. He plays football, though. The football coach is all right. You know, he's really likable. They mm -hmm. just don't win. They don't even have a mandatory weight program. So he's 400 pounds. Can barely put up 95 pounds on the bench press. Jesus Christ. Something I could do. You're yeah. not playing you're not playing football. They not get, playing real football. So they get a they get a new coach. Right? They get this assistant coach, Mark Hodges. Mark Hodges is like a two time champion, state champion. Nice. Two so time. he comes here and he's trying to change the program up. Nice. He sees Kev and he's like, yo. Cuts him. This nigga at this point, Kev's playing baseball. He's six four, three hundred pounds. Cuts him. Coach is like this nigga should be playing football. Nice. Yeah, this nigga biggest shit he's put. And so Kev, Kev is like just an awkward teenager who's being bullied. So when he gets this positive <clears throat> attention, he's like, yeah, I'll join the team. Let's do it. So Mark Hodges gets Kev on the team, and he's serious. Like they, He tries to put Kevin's shape. 
they practice all the time to the point where they have illegal Sunday practices, and then that gets found out, and they got to sacrifice Kev's whole sophomore year. Damn. So Mark Hodge, or the team, but Kev's too. So Mark Hodge spends that whole year getting Kev in shape. So nice. he goes from not being able to bench 95 pounds and not being able to squat his own body weight being to being able to squat over 500 pounds Nice in one year. So nice. going from not being able to squat barely 200, 300, nice. which, is, which you should be able to do anyway. You should be able yeah. to squat your body weight. Yeah, but, least, yeah. So this was helpful for Kevin. And also Hodges brought in his friend, who is the O-line coach, Coach Cribs. Coach Cribs takes these kids in and he's like, you guys are my children. Josh Cribs? <laughs> no, he's white. <laughs> So, <laughs> he basically became a beast with these two coaches. And Coach Cribs, the O-line coach, used to be an O-lineman himself. He wore number 77. And he was like, y'all niggas not fit to wear my number. Damn. Kev's like, I am. Eventually balls out, plays hard enough, and is awarded the number 77. Nice. Nice. So. Kids balling. That's what's up. The problem, though. He knew everything about football. Mm-hmm. He knew nothing about school. Mm-hmm. He had a 1.8 GPA. Ah, dude. So where he was in the district, there was a rule, right, that says for athletes, you need to have either a 2.0 GPA ah, dude. or to be passing all your classes with a D. Oh, and he's not passing all So he's either. passing his classes with a D to play. Oh, shit. The problem is every other school in the country, now this is an error in the textbook, really Kev should not have been able to play football. No. Every other school goes by both. You need a 2.0 GPA, and you need to be passing. Not or, and. And. This school just had an C's. error in their, in their textbooks. What? What's that? Literally, just get C's. Get some C's. But he didn't care about school. He didn't bother to learn about school, so he had an abysmal GPA. Dude. So his oh. coaches never knew this, so he can't go play football anywhere no, else. No, no. At all, he can't go to college. But he did play. And eventually his coach started handing out, like, recruitment letters, and he's like, yeah, I bet I'm getting mad at these. You can't. What he was really getting. What he, oh, shit. Uh, wait, okay, so. Yeah, he's getting these recruitment letters, and then he started to call himself Mr. D1. And he basically walked around being like, yeah, I'm going D1. And people were like, all right, fair. Like, you're, we get it. Your self-esteem is tied to this, and you haven't had self-esteem before, so we get it. But, of course, there were people that were also like, Nigga, you get to college, you're going to fail out because you're dumb. And that, that, that got to him. But he had these letters, right, to be like, I'm going D1. Like, his self-esteem is tied to the letters. Turns out, he's getting form letters. These are just bulk mail that they sent out to everyone. <clears throat> How the coaches don't know this boggles my mind. Maybe, and uh, the video I watched, maybe the coaches are like, let's give this nigga a win. They're just, hey... They're just hey. They're like, hey, let's just let him pass and two more oh years and he's gosh, out of our fucking hair. No. So he tells his parents he's gotta he's gotta go up to Washington College because he's gotta visit there. Gets up there, goes to the school, coaches are like, Who are you? Um, we don't know you. So he actually goes and sees a Mariners game and then flies back home, tells everyone it was a great trip. <laughs> a Mariners game? Yeah. <laughs> so then he goes to Oregon. But this time he goes with his coach. And he gets there, and it's not like, per se, he's the worst football player on, on the field. But it's very obvious he's not D1 talent. But he's vocal, he's loud, showing leadership. So the coach is like, let's throw him a little ball. Throw him a gimme. Give him this form to f- fill out. It's like, hey, just probably give it to everyone that tries to walk on. and say, like, fill this out, and we'll get it. Kev throws it away. He's like, my grades are trash. I know I cannot get into the school. <laughs> so he throws it away. He's like, I know, I know what I'm doing. Coach, though, comes back, and he's like, yeah, they looking at my boy. They about to, yeah, they about to do some shit. Coach is just full tilt. I don't know why. I don't know if he didn't talk to any other coach there or what, but he is full tilt. So he continued the lie that he's going D one to the coaches, saying, "Yeah, I'm impressing these niggas at camp." He gets interviewed by the town newspaper and lies to them. There are no visits to the school, no visits to his house. There are no schools asking coaches for film on him. No nothing. No paperwork for a nigga not good at school. <laughs> coaches didn't ask him about the paperwork. We're like, hey, how's that going? Oh, it's, it's not. <laughs> coaches would be helping you out with the Literally, paperwork. If anything, coaches it out for would you be they don't doing trust this shit year old for kid. you. The only thing you should really have to do for your college application is fill out your fucking social security say, number and do if, your college. Not at, even, do your um. It's not even a college application because you can do a college application by yourself. 
Yeah. Like, did one for W, did one for Delaware County. It is like a form to sign for it. Like that's so much more complicated. You cannot go and do all that paperwork by yourself because that's not something that everyone can go and fill out. So the fact that his coaches dropped the ball so hard here is so frustrating. But his senior year is his best year. So is he, is he at least getting his grades up? No. By this time? <laughs> his senior year is his best year, and he even like goes into the senior year treating himself like he's believing his own lie. So he's holding himself up like he's a D1 athlete. But he's know. training like a D1 athlete. He's taking everything seriously, more serious than before, because now in his head, this lie is coming true. I'm going to be a D1 athlete. He even has some schools come and look at him. But he never gets his grade up. Like, he had time. If he got gotten his grades up in this time, he could have got some offers. Yeah, you would have been maybe okay. It's it's a 2.0, man. You had 1.8. You had a 1.8 GPA. If he would have just studied a little just bit. Just pull some C's, dude. So, That's basically, around this time, he tells his coach, Coach Cribs, uh, I'm going to Cal. Don't tell anyone. Uh, coach Cribs is so excited, he calls Cal. And Cal is like, who? We've never heard of this <laughs> nigga before in our life. So he's like, oh, he might be going to Oregon. So Coach Cribs is like, yo, Kev, what's going on? And Kev, split lie, he goes, oh, you know, they can't talk about recruits. So they can't talk. That's why they didn't say it. They couldn't say anything, even though you're my coach. Dumbass believed them. What? You're a coach, though. You What? Dumbass believed them. No. No. His time had run out. Basically, someone had decided that, like, he was the first kid from his town to go D1. So someone was like, let's have a press conference. So he gets in the gym. And that's the press conference we saw. He says, I'm going to Cal. Cal calls the coaches and says, yet again, we told you, we didn't offer this kid anything. Know this nigga. So the coaches go to Kev and was like, yo, what's going on? They said they didn't offer you anything. And Kev's like, uh, what happened was some guy said he was going to middleman and talk to teams for me. And I just had to pay him money. He ran off with my money. Coaches and the cops were like, all right, Kev, who did this to you? Tell us who wronged you. He says his name was... Kevin Riley. Now, at the time, Kevin Riley was the starting quarterback for Cal. Why would you give that name? Why, why would you do that? That's just going to make it so much worse. He's the, oh. A few days later, he confesses. No. And that's where this gets really, really sad. No. He had to go back to school, embarrassed, ashamed. People are picking on him. Kevin He's still playing football. Why? And the opponent, the opposing team's fans are wearing shirts to the game that says, <laughs> I'm going to Cal. <laughs> it's so mean. <laughs> it's so mean. That's so funny. Listen, <laughs> this is the definition <laughs> of bad playing it. Bad What'd you lighted. say, man? What goes around fucking comes, comes around, around, man. So while all this is happening, <laughs> we have a junior college trying to contact Kev. So what happens with a lot of football players when they're in high school? They don't think about the junior college route. I didn't even think about wanting to go to a junior college for school. Why would if I was a football player? Why am I thinking about that? When in reality, if you don't get if you don't get recruited by anyone, going to a junior college is it's your best, best option. Move. Is your best option. You go somewhere, play for two years, get yourself on tape, and it's with a school, it's with a program, and you can show yourself off. But Kev doesn't know this. And they can actually help you out with your grades. I, did, I didn't know this. So I can't even blame Kev. I enjoyed school. I can't blame a nigga who hated school. You got coaches. You got I coaches. can blame the coaches 100%. You got though. coaches. So this is Juco College called Kev. Called the school. was like, yo, we want to talk to this nigga. But at the time, his coaches were like, Juco. junior college. I got that. But it sounded like you said a Jewish company. Oh, no. <laughs> I was like, what the Jew fuck is that? But yeah, so his coaches were like, Kev's going to Cal. He's going D1. We don't need to hear from him. Like, we wouldn't listen to calls from a D2 or D3 school, let alone a junior college. So they just ignore it. Junior college, after this all happens, tries to call Kev again at his house. But he's getting so much hate phone calls and prank phone calls. His parents don't even answer the phone. So he's ready to just give up on himself. His coaches aren't quite ready to give up on him. They're like, why don't you start? They're not answering shit. visit him. So he's like, why don't you? He's like, why don't you start? Like, the coaches are like, dude, like. Just start applying to these other junior colleges, try and get your stuff out there. And he's just like, I'm done with football. So he goes home and he's got a pile of mail and he starts opening the mail. And at first it's all like, fuck you, you piece of shit, this and that. But then as he's opening the letters, he's getting more and more of like, hey, we support you. Your situation sucks and we know it, but don't stop grinding. Like, keep going. And he starts hanging these on his wall and he starts working out again. And he goes to the junior college that calls him. 
And then eventually, he gets drafted to a D- D2 school. Yeah. Missouri announces Kev's offer on February 1st, 2012, Exactly four years after his infamous I'm going to Cal conference. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Horrors of the world. That's great. See, because if it was me, he was so deep in that lie. It was just, it got to a point where he was like, I can't back. I went all the way to a different state. To- I said, I'm going D1, <laughs> baby. I can't hey, go to when junior you start, college. When you started calling yourself D1 is when you eliminated all options for anything other than D1. He said, I'm not listening to junior <laughs> college. He's going to Cal. <laughs> My baby going to Cal. <laughs> no, the fuck he's not. Nah, he's not. Oh, man. Well, at least Kevin Hart made it, you know. He had his own world tours. He performed at... Oh, no, that's the other Kevin Hart. Different. At least different. Kevin Hart made a D2, right? Yeah, yeah. At least he made a D2. That's not too Mr. Bad D2 don't sound too should. bad. Not as good as Mr. D1, but Mr. D2. Not as good as Mr. Worldwide, but Mr. D2. Kevin Hart is going to <laughs> Missouri. Mr. 3000. That's a little better. <laughs> or about that's Mr. Worldwide. That's what I said. It's not better than Mr. Worldwide. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Man. All right. So we're at the end of our podcast. Guys, anything else you want to shout out before we hang up? Good night. No. <laughs> go home, take a nap. Go home, take a nap. I'm gonna take a nap. I'm gonna go home and take a nap. I'm gonna take a nap right here. Get some cheese dip. All right, guys. Ready? Thank you for watching. My name's Cliff. These have been the beautiful niggas, and this has been Higher Education's podcast. Podcast.